Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Ramesh Babu. Ramesh is the Chief Information Officer of DigiKey Electronics, a private company that offers design tools, business solutions, and the world's largest selection of in-stock electronic components. Forbes estimates that DigiKey earns roughly $5 billion in annual revenue. Ramesh has been Chief Information Officer for more than four of his eight and a half years with the company. And in his role, he's responsible for the global vision, strategy, and planning of IT and digital technology for the company. He's led a remarkable transformation, which I look forward to hearing more about in this conversation. And the company has a remarkable culture that I look forward to hearing more about through the conversation as well. Ramesh Babu, welcome to Technovation. It's great to speak with you today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. I've been looking forward to this uh, very much. Well, let's begin, if you don't mind, Ramesh, with your business. Uh, DigiKey is one of these organizations that probably many uh, listeners and viewers are less familiar with, but I know having gotten to know you that I knew very little about it. And now having uh, heard more from you, it's sort of popping up in a variety of different places uh, as sometimes B2B businesses do uh, uh, once, once you become more familiar with the business. Take a moment, if you would, and add a little more color to what I described in the introduction, if you would. Yeah. No, as you uh, kind of uh, mentioned in your intro, DigiKey is that company that is kind of a small, unknown to many, but doing great things. We are in the business of innovation around technology and electronics. You know, I lived in Minnesota for 20 plus years. Believe me, I have not heard of DigiKey for the first 10 years of my living in Minnesota. We are uh, from a very small town, northwest in Minnesota. We ship to 180 countries, these technology components. And um, uh, we carry, as you alluded to, about 15 million electronic components uh, from over 2,400 quality name brand manufacturers. So we are the medium for these amazing electronic manufacturers to reach the right customers all over the world. And we participate in the early innovation life cycle of an electronic product. Now think about any of the electronics, whether it is iPhone, whether it is automobile uh, electronics, and uh, their R&D departments uh, participate with us. Help, uh, we help design some of these com uh, products in their products. Uh, so that is what is the differentiating element. We don't participate in the production side of some of these uh, uh, big uh, products like iPhone but we participate in the innovation cycle of that product, right? So that is very key. So we do careful business with the engineers, with the engineering. We, our, our slogan is we get technical. So we not only provide component, we help design these products uh, uh, along the way. So that's what makes us stand out in the industry. So we are not here to just sell. We are here to innovate and grow with the company kind of a deal. What a fascinating overview. Another thing I found very interesting, uh, Ramesh, as you and I got to know each other, was a bit about the history of the company. It's headquartered in a small town in northern Minnesota called Thief River Falls. Um, and it's a fascinating, it's a small town, as I say, where a decent percentage of the uh, town overall works for the company. And uh, I know you spend a good amount of time there. You're based uh, um, uh, in, in the Twin Cities uh, of Minneapolis, St. Paul, but, but spend a, a good amount of time in Thief River Falls yourself. Talk a bit about that that uh, history of the founding of the of, of the company in the small town and the relationship between the town and the company, if you would. Definitely, yeah. Um, Eight thousand people live in this town, Thief River uh, Falls, uh, and uh, about three thousand three hundred people work in DigiKey. Uh, Forty percentage of that county's population, one way or the other, work for DigiKey. Super fascinating. So we are not a company. That is uh, right. Just doing business, we kind of participate in the community. Um, so the DigiKey is looked up on by almost the whole community in northwestern Minnesota. So you go to any college, university, people would know the name DigiKey, and it's a very cold place, no doubt. You know, I've I've been in minus seventy degree air temperature in Thief River Falls. We have a parking lot dedicated for snowmobiles. And um, uh, people are uh, so friendly and uh, very close, tight community there. And uh, everything we do is not just to make our business grow, but the community grow. That is a piece that is fascinating uh, to me. Like I used to work for a company like Target before. Uh, I love Target, 
but still the satisfaction i get out of working in peace river participating in that community um i have not felt it in any other jobs i had um uh, so fascinating town fascinating people fascinating community to be part of i think every company have a story like this probably but um i can tell you you have to see it to believe it you come there right from the day like we whenever we fly into thifro or falls we do have a airport uh, we park cars with doors not uh, locked like uh, you know we have digiki has our vehicle so i'll go there and there will be a car waiting for me he will be under the mat and uh, we go and it's it's that kind of a community trusting community even in this age of a modern world i am fascinated by a community like that uh we have a internal website we celebrate every baby born every birthdays right you know i thought that was like not big companies don't do that is the thinking i used to have but we truly try to our in our value system our first value is people first and we truly behave and practice that in every part of the operation and the company um i can keep talking for the whole day about some of these small things we do well uh and uh, you know i don't want to occupy the whole podcast with that <laughs> but but still it's it's fascinating i i i it's rare i i can't remember ever speaking with someone where such a, a high percentage of a town works for for a company like this and i and the ways in which you describe the cultural elements that 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 uh follow that are are profound to say the least different from most uh, um certainly and so i appreciate you sharing a bit about a bit about that culture Um and talk a little bit about uh, further about your role as chief information officer if you would Ramesh. No two CIO roles are exactly the same. So please uh talk a bit about your purview if you would. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and as I, you said we are a private company. We have a team of eight executive leadership. I am one of them. So I wear two hats. Um you know my uh, our my boss Dave uh, president of the company operate this executive team as a board as well right so we kind of wear the board member hat since we are a private uh, our board is structured a little differently than what you would see in a public company uh, so and then of course i lead all the technology related uh, uh, design delivery support just like any other cio would do the reason it's interesting a lot of times you do hear about IT leader having a seat at the table but structurally I do right because of the board member so I uh, participate in business decision I invite business leader participate in technology decision making so it's a very um uh, uh, practical but also very highly accountable uh, team of leaders and I am proud to be part of that leadership group uh, so whenever people ask me explaining CIO role I don't even think of me just responsible for the technology portion of the business i think of that as part of the company running the company being accountable for uh, the results of the company and because of the structure i'm talking about it is happening it is not a theory we say to the world oh it leader is sitting at the table but it is structurally mentioned and uh, practiced like that very interesting yeah and and unusual as you say uh, given those board like responsibilities you have for the organization as well i i know also from our past conversations you've led uh as this company has grown tremendously even in the a uh, time that you've been with it uh you've led a modernization of the technology function uh befitting where this organization is going uh, and the the growth to come as well talk a bit about the form that has taken what have been some of the elements of modernization that you have found to be particularly important yeah and when i joined about 8 years back we were about 1.2 billion dollar company uh, as of now we are about uh, 5.2 billion in the 8 years so we had tremendous growth being in a small town it was unheard of that you would have this multi billion dollar company um where there are practical constraints right labor constraint uh, logistical constraint right and um, uh, so uh, it was interesting for me the company was set up not to become a multi billion dollar company the technology decisions that were made uh, early on were meant to make this company grow to 500 million right here we are 10 times more than that 
So in this last few years, I had to systematically, along with the team, kind of untangle some of the earlier decisions. And they were good decisions. At that time, I would have made the exact same decision if I were there. This is a 50-year-old company. So we had to put together a plan to keep the support the growth, but also position it for the future, right? And uh, so it was very, you know, I, as, as people always say, it's easy to build a solution um, technology solution for a company that is brand new, that is a startup, right? But whereas we had this legacy footprint, um, custom footprint, um, so we, everything we did before I joined was homegrown. We never used to buy software, off-the-shelf software. So one of the major uh, shift we did is uh, to break that decision and also not just go blindly for software off the shelf for everything, right? So we had to be reasonable. We had to really think through, for example, we recently bought financial solution off the shelf, right? So that was an easy one as an example to go instead of having a homegrown code support that. Uh, uh, so we had to come up with this buy or build that every company struggles with, a clear decision on where we will build, where we would buy. For example, our e-commerce is our engine for growth uh, Digikey, for example, even though we are a five billion company, we don't have a huge on the field sales force at all. Our sales truly happen in digital ways. So we were a digital company before digital was even a word. I'm talking about 40 years back, 30 years back, 20 years back, every decision we made were with these labor constraints in mind. We had to be digital. We had to scale um, so the technology had to come along and support that, right? So the buy versus build is one of the major shift we did in terms of modernizing and scaling and supporting the company. Then double clicking on um, the buy versus build, um, what are the things we started modernizing where e-commerce, we went to the cloud like anybody else. Um, and uh, that is really saving our day. I talked about reaching 180 countries from this uh, small town. Um, and uh, so we had to really support the infrastructure to be safe. So we went to cloud very early in the game and uh, that helped us, right? So we do measure how our customer experience doing business with us through e-commerce. Uh, you know, people in Asia, when they do come to our website, then digikey.com and enter, we were, our goal is to serve the website in less than two seconds. And we are more or less achieving that goal. There are definitely uh, challenges there, but it used to be eight seconds, nine seconds before that. And we were able to modernize our e-commerce uh, stack, to be able to serve no matter from where you are reaching us. Uh, and then on the back end, uh, we had to really systematically untangle our homegrown ERP system. Piece by piece, we are modernizing. It is so complex, uh, Peter. You know this probably from uh, many other companies. Uh, modernization is, everybody has that in their agenda, but doing it is a different deal. Uh, how do you, like I always use this analogy, we are running a marathon, we are adding a billion dollar a year to our top line, and how do you do heart transplant as you are running a marathon? We literally did are doing that. There are a lot of failures, I'm not going to lie, uh, but uh, it took more than what we originally estimated, but we are able to go with a domain-driven design approach. Uh, we broke this monolithic homegrown ERP into domains like you know customer domain and warehouse management domain, finance domain, and piece by piece, we are modernizing that. And But with all that, with the goal of scaling, uh, Digiki, I always say to my team, our technology solution is in the way of scaling. Digiki can become a $25 billion company if only our technology can scale. Our customer want us. We do have, our problems are different, right? We have sales waiting for us. But can we support that sale is the challenge I deal with within my technology team. And so far, we are on that track. We have a long way to go. What a fascinating overview, Ramesh. Thank you for that. And 
I can only imagine for an organization when you joined that did essentially everything build, that it's quite a cultural change uh, to go to at least some buy, obviously, no doubt, some build still. Um, and, and I wonder how you thought about, uh, you know, among the worries perhaps might be by, from some employees uh, as, as you began to develop this plan was that some jobs would go away as a result of this. I imagine there was a lot of retraining so that people could take on additional responsibilities uh, where, where some of their old responsibilities would no longer be uh, necessary once off the shelf uh, solutions were brought in. Talk a bit about that pivot point, if you would, um, and how you thought about the rearranging of things as a result of the plan you had in place. Yeah. No, just like any other company, this is a major shift culturally for my uh, technology team. But the team was amazing. We were adopting anything that would come at us as a new way of doing things early because it was a necessity than um, for any other reason, right? We had to really scale the team as well, right? I talked about solution scaling. The team started feeling the overburden as we were growing. Uh, so when we presented this buy versus build conundrum, it is still a very highly debated uh, topic within DigiKey. There are people who are proud of what they have built, built all these years. And it, because of that is where DigiKey is today, right? So there is a huge credit to the past decision, past solution that were built with blood and sweat. So first step as we started shifting is acknowledging that. Because we didn't want to uh, say to the team, you are done. I am going to move to buying uh, software versus building. That is not the way we approached it. So even though there were you know very like a lot of healthy friction between decision making like that with the development team so i always had town hall every month even do, now we continue that practice we allocated training budgets per head uh, that were uh, to kind of upskill and cross skill the team um, you know the luckily digiki had this good problem right we are still growing leaps and bounds so it was never the risk of job for our team. It is really that ownership that we had to respect, the proud ownership of what they have built. Once we cracked that code, uh, slowly people started accepting this new strategy. Again, as I said, we are not going all in with build just yet, because that is also stupid um, in my mind. And so we had to be careful about what we built. There were some bad build by decision we made uh, that came back to haunt us, right? So, so we had to be humble about not just just because it is a strategy to go by. We were not executing on that for everything. We were we learned our lessons. We adjusted, tweaked our strategy for this. Yes, we would do that. Um, uh, so that so the team had to really come along for this shift. Even today, it is a a big topic for us. Almost every decision to buy. We do have a, a influencer group within IT who are consulted first before leaders like me get involved in that. Uh, there are times where I have overruled the team's uh, recommendation, but I had to explain why. I had to explain clearly why and get their approval for the why. We do for practice disagree and commit a lot within DigiKey, and uh, that has helped save the day for us uh, for some time. Really fascinating. And again, I, I can only imagine I'm, I'm I'm thinking about the thread pulled through this conversation, Ramesh. If you've got you've got 40% of this town that works for for you, there's I would imagine more of a familial bond within a company like this than in most. And so the desire to make sure that people are taken care of, that they cross the chasm from old ways of doing things to new ones is I, I would imagine more than any company you've worked for in the past as well. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, very, very fair assessment. And so, and throughout this process, we had to be cognizant of that particular point, right? Uh, about teams, uh, because it is, you know, people like me who kind of relatively knew, even though I've been with the company for nine years, you would see, I invite you, Peter, to come and visit us one day. The proud group, like when we miss orders, when I'm walking through our distribution centers, 
if by for any technical ch- reasons or otherwise if we miss an order that we committed to customer i have seen people cry on the floor like it was very new to me coming from the minneapolis city that was new to me at the end of the day i had this attitude it is just work but here in digiki it is not just work you literally even today i have seen i mean um people crying for missing the order we have this sla we give to the customer if you submit an order 8 pm central we do put that box in the plane that day before that night right and when we don't meet that sla in other companies i have seen leaders getting worked up here the people on the floor get worked up my boss i have gone to the floor and every day we have picked and packed just to meet that sla that's a culture that is digiki has we call that a second skill everybody in digiki we encourage them to develop a second skill that is d- different from what you do right as an it leader my second skill is picking in the warehouse think about that and everybody in it have a second skill like that and when time calls for we all show up at the warehouse you will see very casually every leader in the company working in the warehouse doing picking cleaning up the floor putting away the stock and that's a culture digiki is proud of and with that in mind when it pivots to build it's a same passion once i understood that it is not because they are worried about their job it is about the future of the company they are worried about they don't care like so that i had to respect and i even today i have to remind myself not to be casual about those kind of decisions it's tough as a scale i do have to make some tough decisions the team does but we have to be cognizant of that underneath passion and the ownership and the culture at the business level at the it level at the technology level and um, that's what i strive to do every day That's a remarkable story. I I, lo- I love the kind of all hands on deck culture that that, that has to make sure that customers uh, uh wishes are fulfilled that the promise to them is fulfilled as you point out. I, I know uh Ramesh from our past conversations coaching is a big part of what you do as well. And I wanted to talk a bit about that. It's such a, a critical element uh in in this day and age as the war for talent is fierce and uh the paucity of resources in some places is profound. Talk a bit about your methods uh of coaching and and how that became a passionate point for you. Right. And I kind of already touched on this second skill even within IT we publish list of second skill for rest of the company to learn, right? Whether it is being a scrum master, whether it is being a tester, uh so people can sign up to learn IT second skill. Now before this, right, we had to develop a um culture of coaching and training within technology team before opening it up for the rest of the company to come and learn from us as well so every any time we hire you know we do get um just like any other company we form a board of director around a person right mentor coach sponsor boss they are all part of that board of director concept that is very well uh, practiced many in many companies and we are no different from there and um, that has kind of generated a culture of coaching and training at every time you see people in addition to doing the job um coaching somebody right we followed agile way of uh, product development for last 12 years now those principle adhering to that peer programming principles kind of embedded that coaching and training culture from the day one for all our team we do hire a lot of people um from the nearby universities as intern when people join digiki as an intern our conversion rate is almost like 80 90% people who come to work as an intern in digiki always end up converting so when we approve intern hiring we don't think of that as a 12 weeks intern program we are really literally giving a job offer for career some of the senior most leader i think another cool percentage 30 to 40 percentage of the it team is came through the intern um uh, path and the, the reason by being 
is that coaching thing you talked about. We also encourage huge uh, shifting around. You know, you are doing a particular job. You are passionate about something else. We put a plan together for you to get you there. And uh, that is also part of the value culture we bring, coaching culture we bring. So all, of, all in all, uh, it's, it's, it's a learning environment. And that also, sometimes I self-reflect about that. How did we end up being? Because every company talks like that, right? Every company wants to have a coaching training uh, mentality. Uh, but in DigiKey, it is practiced. Uh, it is very unique. I think some of them is necessity as well, right? We being small town, uh, you know, there is a sense of necessity. We have to keep this going. Otherwise, kind of a thinking, right? So so it's, it's fascinating for me to reflect on how lucky we have that these kind of um, uh, things that are talked about outside of Diziki is practiced day in, day out. Yeah, very, very interesting again. I wanted to raise the topic of artificial intelligence, Ramesh. You, you spoke recently at a Meta Strategy Digital Symposium about this topic and, and very cogently at that, uh, a topic that has been around for a while now, but with renewed uh, emphasis across many organizations, given the prominence of it and the, the, the past six or seven months of generative AI's uh, expansion and so forth. Uh, you know, given the prominence of digital to your business model, as you point out, really for decades, uh, and in some of the most profound and important areas, including uh, being a, a, a sales engine for you since before digital was really a part of the main nomenclature, as you point out as well. I, I'm, I'm curious about the implications of artificial intelligence on an organization like yours. Definitely, yeah. And, you know, I always joke about digital was necessity for DigiKey even before digital transformation was a buzzword in industry. Um, you know, digikey.com was one of the earliest website registered in the country, um, right? And uh, so similar to that, AI also, it's super interesting to see everybody running behind AI, right? And no conversation goes without 100 times people uh, uh, talking about AI. And we have been um, in that AI journey for a few years now. Um, so even though Gen AI has changed the pace of the conversation, we definitely have a very strong data science team who have been exploring AI-based efforts to give us that scale, that digital uh, strategy um, for a few years. Obviously, we are also in that window of how do we fast track some of those conversations now uh, we've been uh, um, working on developing our own internal, for lack of a better word, chat GPT environment for enterprise search. So in the next two weeks, it's going to go live with internally in a limited way where we are hooking all our data sources into this enterprise data search use case. That is one, um, um, but we are not even thinking about that as the end goal. We are doing as I mentioned before, a little bit of a non-fancy AI use cases. I, I mentioned about our product portfolio, right? It's millions and millions, 15 million as of this minute. One of the things with the electronic component is each of these product come with 10 pages of data specifications, right? Tech spec as they call them. Uh, so we assign government assigned codes. So one of the first projects what Gen AI type of a situation is helping is automatically assign, um, you know, this tariff code to the product. That is, hell, like, these, the team who does it, they don't enjoy that work. You have to refer thousands of government pages to get the right code assigned to a particular product. Do that in 15 million SKU, right? So talk about scaling. How do you do this manual, repeating, uh, methodical work? into an automated work is the right use case we felt. So that is one example where we are successful to think about this AI um, strategy for us, not in this fancy terms, but in a very realistic terms, and also kind of do it before you jump to the next one um, approach. So that has been helping us. We have a long way to go, just like many, but, uh, many, but that is also another uh, big strategy portion for us to stay in business, to grow the business. 
Yeah, what an interesting use case. I can understand that as being a very welcome change and, and a, a welcomed bit of work to be taken off of people's plates as they may focus in other areas, as you pointed out earlier. I wanted to, uh, so generative AI is certainly a, a profound and rising trend. Uh, what other trends, uh, Ramesh, are, are making their way onto your roadmap that particularly excite you as you look to the future? Like, again, I don't have any great wisdom other than uh, what I think the rest of the world is all talking about, right? How do you go digital? I think we are at a phase now, it has, instead of a buzzword and having um, digital transformation strategy for every company, I truly see digital becoming more real for companies, right? And um, And also the fear of going digital, taking away job is also Subsetting. People are realizing digital is here to help. Like I gave that AI example um, and using the same example, like the team that does that work, you know, they are not worried about losing their job. They are so happy to give that job to an automated system and go do high value job. I mean, that is true in our case in many and that trend is very exciting for me. So how do you find those kind of use cases to go digital and show it to the people so that these people are off to do better things? Um, so that transition is happening within DigiKey, and I'm watching that happening outside of DigiKey as well, right? So uh, you don't sit in a digital transformation PowerPoint and scratch your head anymore. It's like you are hearing real use cases. I'm excited about that. And I want to do more of that, right? What else am I missing? Uh, what else excites the team? You don't need this buzzword filled digital transformation story. You need more more realistic, implementable that uh, gets the people doing high value job, right? So that is one interesting trend. I, as you have noticed, I don't use technology buzzword, right? It's all about at the end of the day, getting the uh, customer satisfaction and the employee satisfaction taken care. In the logistics space, with the COVID, everybody supply chain challenges made us all wake up around logistics, supply chain. And I am seeing a lot of innovation happening in that area using technology. Um, uh, what I mean by that is like one of the example is you know, we are now consuming uh, ports uh, around the world, The you know, whether it is LA or wherever, like we are subscribing to the port traffic data to predict when we will have product on our inventory. Um, um, uh, so th those kind of data is available now. People are starting to tap into to use for their forecasting and demand planning and uh, uh, like that. So the, the supply chain, I think, is where a lot of investment have started. We will see fruits of that in the coming year. And DigiKey depends on our logistic and supply chain for our growth. Uh, and, uh, you know, for us to maintain this uh, network of 180 countries shipment, we have this SLA one day within North America, three days for Europe, five days uh, for Asia. We are more or less keep up that SLA, but as our business grows, it's becoming more challenging to keep to that SLA. So we are innovating and investing in a lot of that to keep that strength uh, available for us for a long time to come. So supply chain is the area I am watching for, and we are going to invest a lot in uh, that trend um, uh, that everybody seems to be doing. That makes sense, and, and uh, the, that would be a, an area of great value. Ramesh, I wanted to ask you also, uh, as somebody who has risen to the CIO rank within a scaled organization like the one that you're a part of at DigiKey, uh, what have been some of the secrets to your success along the way? What have been the difference makers that have aided your rise professionally that you would call out? That's a tough question. Um, you know, when I look back, reflect, sometimes I do feel like I was lucky to be in this role uh, uh, so, so luck played a role, you know, uh, in in um, that. But you know, regardless, I think maybe this is also I keep like this is a trend in my answers to you. Um, everybody does this, right? So I was able to stay close to the business side more than technology side. Um, so uh, I have never thought about technology on its own. 
I always use business terms and business uh, results as a way to do technology work. Um, so any job I have taken, I never spend time learning about technology. I spend time and I learned about what am I trying to do? What am I helping? Who am I helping? And developing those relationships as well help. So I can have a, you know, in DigiKey, the eight executive team, each of us are so fortunate. We don't have any other agenda other than helping each other out. And they share and I share about some of the challenges in the business and the technology and asking curious question about business, how it works, not just even their current state, but also some of the things that are working well and learning that and protecting that working well um, helped. And then I turned the table uh, chair to the team. I'm able to articulate why we are doing what we are doing. And that really propelled my career all along. I'm seen as a business leader than a technology leader. And to get that credibility, um, you have to know the business. So that I would um, say as one of the differentiator for me as I grew in my career. Well, that's, I think it's a, a great piece of advice for anyone who's in a role like yours is to understand who who are you aiding, as you say, and develop relationships and ultimately develop uh, solutions, uh, capabilities that are going to be uh, do, doing that again and again. But Ramesh Babu, thank you so much for a, a wonderful conversation, emblematic of the remarkable role that you play in a company that's had a, a remarkable rise across the eight plus years that you have been there. Uh, it, uh, amazing to hear more about the role that your team has played to aid that and the extent to which it will continue to be one of the key determinants of continued growth as well. It's an inspiring story. And thank you so much for telling it uh, to, to our audience today. I, I really appreciate Peter coming into this conversation. This kind of conversation is always nerve-wracking for me. Um, and uh, you made it made me so comfortable. It, it almost felt like I was talking to a friend. So thank you for making it an easy exercise for me. Well, I, I, you're very kind to say that. Uh, you, a great story that you have to tell. And I'm so glad we had a chance to, to hear it from you. Thank you again.